And we are on. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Super great to see you. Great to see you too. Really happy we are doing this. Yes, so am I. So, Amalia and everybody watching, what are we going to do today? What are we going to talk about today? Uh, so we had this idea since we started to, to get to know each other better that it would be good to actually have a conversation and talk a little bit about what we are doing, what we are giving to the world, taking in consideration that we both talk about sexuality, uh, but then we have like different perspective into this subject and we said, well, perfect, that's a very complementary way of looking at sexuality. So we called this whole conversation sexuality from body to spirit. Yes, and I'm looking forward to diving into this talk with you. And uh, I wanna encourage anybody watching, uh, write your comments or your questions. And if we feel the need, we can actually make a second video to answer any particular questions that you guys have. Yes, this has the potential to transform into a series, depending on your questions, your interactions, uh, and everything else that we can think of giving together. Yes, so this is sequel, take one. Take one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I would love to. So for anybody who doesn't know me yet, my name is Liana. Uh, I live in Bucharest, Romania, Southeastern Europe. And since 2016, uh, I decided to open a new path to my uh, social mission, let's say, in terms of sexual development. That's what I called it. My history is pretty simple. I used to be, and still am, an environmental activist. But in terms of personal life, I wasn't so happy. And one day I also, uh, actually half a year, I experienced a, an abusive relationship. I had no idea about that. And the sexual abuse in it was also pretty significant. And after I got out of a therapy, um, well, round of sessions, I decided I was going to develop in other ways if through a healthy relationship that was not possible. So since 2016, I've been basically doing everything that I knew in terms of opening a sexual development path. And this is what got me today to this conversation with Amalia and everything else that you will discover through the conversation. Thank you. <laughs> on, on my side, it was 2012, that was my, my year of starting um, freelancing as a life coach, very much into the area of personal development and questioning and, and the mind and the ideas and the beliefs that we hold. Nevertheless, uh, very soon into this dive, I started to notice that in my coaching conversation, more and more people were bringing subjects like relationships, satisfaction, orgasm, pleasure. And then for me, that was a signal that I want to dive more into this subject. My own experience with myself and in my relationship is not enough for me to be able to serve more. Uh, so a little bit later on, on this path, uh, I started diving a lot into spirituality and the holistic way of looking at everything, and in the same time, into sexuality. Uh, I did a course for four years of sacred sexuality, and then I started diving into how these two areas can actually be, be brought together in the human consciousness, because I do believe they are already together, but we have separated it during the millennia of being here on this earth. So right now I'm focusing my activity into one-to-one -one sessions, focused on this way of being conscious towards sexuality and bringing the divine into conversation and also delivering spaces for larger people of groups online or in person, again, where we tap into this, this energy and we discover ourselves through it. Super. <laughs> okay, so for today, we thought we would approach sexuality from body to spirit in four different 
elements, let's say, for yeah. lack Aspects. of better expression. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to address them in the following order, hopefully, <laughs> in case nothing changes in the spur of the moment. So uh, physical or body, emotional, mental with the conscious, maybe subconscious also, and then the spiritual, the sacred, the subtle, the ethereal, so everything else that is out there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. The, the guideline we want to follow, the structure. Yeah. And let's yeah. see how we are going to flow with it. So yes. tell us about your relationship with body from this with perspective body. of the sexual energy. Well, first of all, my official certification right now is sexological body worker. And I'm also studying somatic therapy. So both of these, um, let's say, training, professional training um, efforts are focused first and foremost on the body, not just because the body contains all the rest or the body is in all the rest. But in terms of body work and processing everything through the body, the... Um, perspective that I have is how well do you embody your sexuality and basically how much sexual energy can you carry into your body and there are some very classical um, tools for this breath sound touch movement to which you also add awareness but that that's in a later stage so whenever I work with somebody on sexuality, whether it's one-on-one -on -one events or even through online trainings, I always ask them, how do you embody your sexual expression? And then we can look at everything that a person is interested in. How long do they carry arousal? Um, how long does an orgasm last for them? <clears throat> how long do they want it to last? And how can they change, as in grow, transform or enrich their embodied expression in our training we call this somatic opening meaning you have either the opportunity to feel sensations in places where your body didn't feel them and you get there through an entire well for lack of better word an entire training you can train your body to feel um, sensations differently but in time and the only thing here is that um, every person chooses what do i want to feel how do i want to express through my body and what are the tools for me me specifically whoever i am that wants to do this what are the tools for me to get there and how does my getting there looks like i love it yeah <laughs> What is look at it? Yeah. What is your approach? Like I'm super curious. Very similar to what you are saying. Nevertheless, I can I can put a different language to it. When I look at the body and what I try to work with the people that I work with is to come to the conclusion that this life is happening in this body. This is our equipment and this is our temple. And if this is our temple, this is our home, we should treat it the same way that we treat a temple, the same way that we treat a home, right? We want to first keep it clean. We want to keep it beautiful. And we want to get to know every little corner that this house, that this temple has. So for me, it's very important to work with body posture, with movement, with dance, uh, in which, as you are saying, we incorporate ourselves to to every cell that our body is made out of and also getting to know it the same way we get to know every corner of our house we have the possibility to get to know our bodies in the same way and we both know how much our culture our society and all other limitations that we have by living where we are living didn't taught us to actually to get to know our body mm -hmm. uh, we talk about our genital area usually in terms of down there 
like it's something in the basement yeah. that we don't go to and it's just is there right so we don't we don't call it by name we we don't look at it we don't explore it we are afraid to consciously touch it so all the time my reinforcement when it comes to body is take the mirror look at yourself or put a big mirror look at your body touch your body feel yourself and see how is it for you to live into this temple yeah okay awesome yeah i call that practice mm -hmm. so daily ideally practice if not just you know weekly practice yeah <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the second now, the That's emotions. Right. Yeah. I would love to hear your insights first here. Emotions. <laughs> if body is earth for me, uh, emotions are water. Uh -huh. Well, why don't I join you? <laughs> In terms of, of elements. Yeah. Emotions. If they are like water for me, emotions are like waves. Mm -hmm. things that come they can grow they can have a certain power and then they just reach the shore where they dissipate and then they are being pulled into another wave of emotion so i think in, in sexuality uh it's amazing if we learn how to surf these waves Mm -hmm. uh, to surf this wave of how is the sexual energy rising in our body, how is the, um, the excitement, the horniness, the, the feeling of wanting to ride this wave, feeling, and how do I go with it? Nevertheless, when it comes to emotions, there, is, there are also emotions that we can consider like barriers in, mm -hmm. in in front of the sexual energy, right? One of these emotions is rage, it's fury, it's being angry. When a person is filled with this emotion and is not expressed in a constructive and safe space, then it's harder to tap into the waves of sexual energy, of, of pleasure, of the erotic in, in our body. Mm -hmm. So it's being able to, to understand that there are emotions that can stop this energy and there are emotions that can actually enhance the, the sexual energy when we are relaxed, when we are in joy, when we are satisfied, it's easier to, to tap and to work with the sexual energy. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about emotions? Well, first of all, what I always uh, mention everywhere is that emotion is the biggest aphrodisiac like before chocolate before maca before i don't know music dance wine anything else a good dinner emotion is the biggest aphrodisiac and emotion is actually the very first thing that takes you just from your sexual physical expression to your internal universe and what i also know about emotion is that, um, well, any emotion can be an aphrodisiac. So you can answer with physical arousal to a wide spectrum of emotions. Yeah. And yes, the most, um, let's say, controversial ones are the negative emotions. Yeah. You can have anxiety, you can have fear, uh, you can have shame and naughtiness. They are considered negative by certain definitions. Some people just call them spicy. You can have hatred, revenge also. Um, they too, in proper conditions, like I have to point this one out, in proper conditions, and proper conditions are different for each one of us, they can serve as aphrodisiacs. The catch that, and this is not just from me, this is from... Um, uh, he's passed on since 2014, but a uh, therapist named Jack Morin, who wrote the book, The Erotic Mind, this was like the Bible in the training that I had with sexological bodywork. Yeah. He was mentioning about troublesome uh, arousals and troublesome turn-ons. And he was the first one to um, categorize emotions in like put them in categories and present how even negative emotions such as anxiety or fear or naughtiness or 
hatred sometimes, they can spark um, arousal. Yeah. But the catch here is that they, they can be present, but the thing is that they can't be more intense than your uh, physical arousal. Mm -hmm. Because if they are, let's say that this is rage, you gave rage, somebody's enraged by something, but they are also physically active for whatever reason they are enraged to something that somebody else did and there's somebody present whom they are attracted to if the rage is harder than their attraction or turn on then yeah the sexual impulse is going to be cut off yeah. if the attraction is larger than that emotion then you can channel this emotion as a fuel yeah into an a sexual act or sexual expression mm -hmm. and the beauty that uh, sexuality has in terms of emotions is that if you do it properly so again for everybody this may be different you can transform it's like you cook your emotions and then something great comes out of them yeah. and this is how therapists know through yeah. emotions if a sexual act was um, let's say good yeah. so you whatever emotion you have that was a turn-on whatever that was, and you manage to turn it into arousal and then you engage sexually, something happened that was positive there, obviously. And when you got out of that, so when you ended that episode, you are more, you end with positive feelings. That's how you know that it was positive. If you end with not so, uh, let's say, intense feelings, but they are still on the positive side, that's also good. If you end with negative emotions, regardless of what emotions you had in the beginning, like you can start with joyfulness, uh, you can start with, I don't know, tenderness, you can start with anxiety, whatever you start with. But if you end with rage, fear, anxiety, anger, anything else in the terms of negative, that was not a good interaction. So the important thing is not necessarily what emotion you go in with as long as it allowed you to be sexually turned on but it's important with what emotion you come out of the episode that's where you look at the health of your sexual interactions mm -hmm. and this therapist said if you have more episodes that end on a low emotion then you have a very good chance that in a few years you will end up in a therapist's um, seat <laughs> i mean uh, what do you call it um, Couch or couch, <laughs> yes, that one. <laughs> yes, that was the word. <laughs> yeah, because the emotions do have this ability to accumulate, even if we are not conscious of it. I yeah. believe that the body is our great receptor of emotions. Right, emotions are physically chemical reactions that are going through our bodies, and if they are not transformed or released, they start accumulating and they can be manifested physically or emotionally or mentally yeah and the that is called couch. somatizing exactly yeah so you somatize your emotions and yeah that's where disease also comes not just uh, mental illness but also physical physical disease. illness yeah. exactly yeah no, yeah because that's why we i think we also started with the body because everything happens in the body emotions are also happening in the body right the thoughts the mind is because we have a body and the spirit too if we wouldn't have a body we couldn't be able to talk about spirit yeah. or energies we wouldn't be on this planet let's say yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay so moving on to the uh mental to the expression. mental one yes yes <laughs> who would like to begin here <laughs> i think i think that mental right can be a very good way of learning how to deal with our emotions too because yeah. you talked about so clearly about the emotions right and how there is the capacity to transform emotions nevertheless we need a great sense of self-awareness to be, able, to be able to understand what are the emotions that are fueling me and how is it that I can transform it into arousal and fuel my arousal, right? And then the mind here needs to be in this state of sharpness, cleanness, awareness to see what are the thoughts and what are the emotions that I can pick on and transform 
put it in this pot, as you said, and cook it in the best way to, to go towards arousal and towards uh, a beautiful, constructive, satisfying sexual act or experience. So with thoughts, I see them as, as clouds if I can put a, a metaphor. And for me, the, the element here, it's air. Mm -hmm. uh, thoughts are like, like clouds. And sometimes the clouds are bigger and they can stay weeks in the sky and they get into this tormented inner mental state. Uh, nevertheless, you always have to remember that the sun is always shining on, on the other side. The skies oh, are clear place. there. Yeah. <laughs> and even if the when the clouds are present, that can also make a beautiful day, meaning that also we can use it towards arousal and towards pleasure. Uh, for me, sexuality happens a lot in the mind too, right? What are the kinds of thoughts that get us aroused? What are the kinds of thoughts that are juicy, that bring pleasure, that, that sparkle things? What do we like to think about in order to, to tap into the, the sexual energy. I work a lot with meditation, personally, yeah. all the time being able to, to find the center for the mind and realizing that the mind is my tool to work with. It's not the mind that is controlling me and has complete uh, ownership of what I'm doing, what I'm thinking and what I am feeling. It's, it's a little bit the other way around meditation it's one of my practices when it comes in the pure mind and journaling putting everything that is here tormented in a linear way and then being able to look into my own thoughts realizing it how cloudy they are mm -hmm. how light and easy to be dispersed and not so hard right and tough and as sometimes we think that that our thoughts can be mm -hmm. how is it for you with uh, with this element with this aspect? well when i work with um this aspect i call it the erotic mindset mm -hmm. and uh, you're romanian i'm romanian we have this romanian saying where the fish rots from the head <laughs> so basically if anything goes wrong that's where it started in the head so that's why whenever I work with people and also in my videos and in everything that I do, I try to bring also structure so that the mind can also have something to chew on. Yeah. And when I explain the erotic mindset, I usually look at several aspects. The first one is definition. So I work with, I try to bring out more and more into the conscious mind. Um, I'll also address a little bit about the subconscious mind. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of bringing into our conscious awareness, definition. I think everything is based on the definition that we have. Yeah. And in terms of sexuality and the erotic, which is not just the, the physical, but also the internal, the emotional universe, we have a, if we were to distill everything to just one essential, I don't know, line, expression, proposition, we all have a ground foundational definition upon which everything else is built mm -hmm. and that foundational definition is crucial and i try to help people to get to that one and i try to give them the reference is this in your opinion a constructive or a supportive foundational definition that you have about your sexuality why I ask them this is because everything now, everything else that comes out of this is going to either support or not your evolution, your life, your interactions, the way you handle your crises because you're going to have them, so on. So the foundation in mental or mindset foundation is crucial. Yeah. Then, based on that, we have various beliefs. Yeah. Now, granted, everybody has positive and negative or supportive, constructive and Anything. unsupportive or destructive, yeah, beliefs. Yeah. But depending on your foundation, so the definition that you have, there can be more towards the positive, more in, more in the neutral, so in the gray area, yeah. or more towards the negative. Let's say that a supportive foundation 
foundational definition yeah. will help you steer much easier towards the positive and and that means a resourceful sex partner or love partner you know and and you want to be that <laughs> let me yeah. tell you that's a beautiful gift for your lover but that's also a beautiful gift to you yeah. and then i also look at the recovery mindset so basically whenever there is an american expression here the shit hits the fan my apologies if this seems too tacky but the truth is this sometimes things get really bad and what your recovery mindset is in those moments can say a lot about you so you're in a period where you don't have a partner or you're in a really big crisis with your partner your recovery mindset is going to be the thing that says okay i have this situation now what some people's recovery mindset is okay i'll just get food i'll just go watch a movie i'll binge on netflix some people will say okay i'll, I'll call i'll take the phone and i'll do a booty call <laughs> some people say okay i'll open an app i'll pick up somebody on tinder match.com whatever <laughs> some people will say okay i have practices that i can do so everybody has you can have more recovery mindsets yeah. the idea is that everything starts from here and those can be seated um planted seated yeah, in you yeah yeah and then there's your mental relationship with the practices yeah. and your mental relation with routine you're gonna get there whether you're single or in a relationship you're gonna get in those stages so i think the mind although the there's the heart math institute i think you've heard of it yeah they have measured that the magnetic field of the heart is like 1000 times stronger than the magnetic than field the of the brain. Yeah. yeah. So our hearts are super strong. They are our engine, but this is the guide. So if your guide is channeling that super strong energy, super strong fuel, power, whatever, superpower, if you want to call it like yeah. that, yeah. if you're into fantasy. Superheroes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> So if you want to channel this into a negative mindset, then it's only your mind that, that that's your compass. Yeah. So it makes sense that you really, really take care of how you're navigating yourself. Yeah. And mindset is super, that's why I'm, I'm still in the pragmatic. I have other sides of myself, you know, in terms of work and physical, you know, personal expression, but I stay a lot in the mental component because I feel that there is not, enough how do i say we don't have a healthy frame overall like on a global scale still with this and i think this is the the solution yeah. and yeah our compass needs some adjusting yeah i, so I love it how you put it right that this is our guide that is po pointing the direction to all this driving force so if we have a, a weak fragile ill guide then all this potential is being directed in destructive ways. Yeah, wasted sometimes. I think and that wasted. Yeah. sexual energy or the erotic energy is a beautiful resource and a lot of us are wasting it. And I think that's the, not the biblical terms of pity, but just a pity, like that's a waste, yeah. such a waste. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Which brings us to number four. Which brings us to no number four, yes, because I see sexuality as sexual energy is life energy. It's creative energy. It's the energy that I believe makes all this universe expand. I like mm -hmm. to think uh, of the Big Bang, if we go on the scientists that uh, they say that, okay, there is a Big Bang, that that's an orgasm of the universe. The universe exploded in that orgasm and we are unfolding our lives in that, um, I don't know, post-orgasmic post -orgasmic um, stage. stage, exactly. Yeah. Some would also call it afterglow. <laughs> well, it did glow, like it, it glowed a lot when it, it glowed a lot, it it, exactly. <laughs> it's a lot of energy, right? Like in an orgasm that is being released in in that yeah. moment so and for me then when i start looking at sexuality like this at the inner sexual energy what i see is that 
there is this force that we have that has the capacity to bring together two completely opposing forces and put them in an alchemizing pot and create a third thing, a third energy. That's for me the, the power that the sexual energy has. And we can go to the basic example of an egg meeting a sperm, which are two completely different forces. Uh, one is active, one is passive. And through the sexual energy, they meet, they both die, they renounce who they were in order to become, to unite and become something else. Mm -hmm. And I can use the same example in a more day-to-day -day and practical way that sexual energy can be an idea that we have and then gathering the resources and then when we put them together we have a project we have a conversation a video that is going to be is recorded and is going to be launched we have building a house we have cooking a meal anything that apparently are completely different forces is this creative energy the sexual energy that brings it together and then if this energy it is so powerful and has the capacity to do that, for me, it is also a way to connect to the divine, to connect to God, to connect to goddess. The same way that we can use meditation, dance, or any other art therapy that we want to feel that connection with something bigger than we are, is the same, another tool that we have, sexual energy, to be able to enter in this communion with something bigger than, than us and to create a relationship with, with that divinity, with that energetic, invisible, universal love that we feel it, but we don't have the material to, to put it in, in, in here. But sexual energy gets us there. For me, it's, it's clear. Mm -hmm. yes what i have to say that this part i did like i usually prepare because i'm i'm very structured oriented or i don't know detail oriented also but with this topic i didn't because i the way that i first of all i need to own one thing for many years i did not even grasp the concept of love i did not even grasp the concept of um spirit it was like i had heard but they were just words they yeah. had no point like they were making no point to me and um they were also really foreign i mean i, I didn't really embody them i was just you know living my life gleefully joyfully and so on and it wasn't until I really um, rose in love, I didn't fall in love, I rose in love with somebody, that um, that relationship didn't happen. So it was really, it ended up being a really painful thing for me. But when I was with my wings open wide, so super beautiful and intense emotions, I got to see, or not to see, to feel, the subtle aspects of everything that is alive, including our sexuality. So basically I got to see or live what it was to know that that person was, he was not living in the same city that I am. So when I heard that he was coming to visit this city where I am in, I really, I just lie down in bed and I was just listening to some chanting music and I lived for the first time what somebody would call an energetic orgasm. And this was just a, a huge, like, I, I can't explain it in any other way, but a huge ball of pleasure that was coming out of my belly or uterus to be more specific. Yeah, and it was just chakra, more, the sacral chakra. It had the hara point. It had yeah. a lot of... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tantian, that's what they call it in um, Chinese traditional Chinese. medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And so that was the first time that I experienced that. And in relation to this person, I never got a chance to tell this guy, like he doesn't even know I had those things. So like he was really not into me. But 
I had a lot of other opportunities to experience lucid dreaming. Um, another thing that my Tai Chi teacher, because I was speaking a lot to her at the time, um, the, the sudden activation of my microcosmic orbit, this comes also from the um, Taoist uh, philosophy or tradition. So a lot of things were happening just because I was in love with somebody or, and I was rising in love. And I was thinking about that person. It was so intense that stuff would happen to me that I couldn't explain. And I kept saying, no, this is because I'm doing Tai Chi. And I was learning Tai Chi also at the time. And my teacher was like, no, that's not that, that Tai Chi doesn't do that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, fine, <laughs> whatever. So that was the, my first experience with this. I don't, um, some may call me a coward. I don't really bring these in my practice. And I rarely talk about these things. I do always make it a point to mention something when I speak about stuff, I mention physical body. And I remember that somebody who's listening to a speech of mine also wrote a comment. He was like, I saw that you kept mentioning the physical body. I'm guessing you know about the other types of bodies. And I said, yes, I know I don't talk about them openly. That doesn't mean I'm close to that, not at all, to the contrary. Mm -hmm. I just haven't found the, my way of bringing that to people and my way of facilitating that to others. Yeah. So that's why I'm really shutting about these. But to me, it's the things that give us wings that we can't see, the, the spiritual component of it. And it's no accident that we bring new life through what? Through sex. I mean, we can produce a lot of things, but they are inanimate objects to the best of our uh, knowledge now. Um, because there's also consciousness in the mineral in the plant uh, animal so yeah i'm not gonna go there but so there's consciousness into everything including in everything every other body celestial body and so on so i do know that and um but there's no mistake that we create life like we are through what through sex we don't create it through a thinking process we don't create it through doing something with our hands <laughs> no it's through the actual act of sex and that's not that's why it's such a powerful tool and that's why it was it's somebody some circles put a cork in it and they reduced it with the allowance of, i mean we allow pornography to thrive and that's the bigger or the biggest uh, break that we put on our um, higher erotic expressions, like the divine sexuality, sacred sexuality, and so on. And yeah, we're never going to get there if we stick to pornography, like you porn, whatever you other know the channels. platforms. They are all yeah. there, right? It's yeah. a, it, as easy as putting it in the Google. But I want to, to yeah. build a little bit on what you're saying about love about sure. this amazing force right that can open up that can make us realize that we do have wings uh and we can can embody everything that means to to have wings and what i work a lot with people it's self-love and when mm. it comes to sexuality and to divine sexuality for me the the ideal image is to be able to be so in love with ourselves that we realize that every act of pleasure that we give ourselves it's a gift to the god in the same time that everything that makes us feel pleasure from a delicious dinner to a beautiful landscape <laughs> to a touch to going into the arousal, the sexual and the erotical energy, it is a gift for ourselves and that's a gift to the spirit. That's a gift to, to the divine. And then being able to be conscious and cultivate that self-love and not uh, wait until we find the person to which we can feel that towards. Of course, when there is two, the power grows, right? Another <laughs> Romanian saying. saying yes. <laughs> and it's beautiful to be able to share that, to love ourselves, love another person, and love what we have together, and create this container where pleasure, it's a beautiful, two, two soul beautifully uniting, and stopping to be what they are and transforming into into something else 
Yeah. That's it, like the, yes, that's a nice objective to have, yeah. <laughs> to be able to connect with God from, from pleasure. And I, talking still about love, uh, I remember that this guy that I mentioned here, who was my spiritual awakening guy, or love, let's say, uh, he had, at, at the time, I was very briefly friends with him on Facebook. It's, it didn't last for long. I bail out usually when something becomes too painful. But he had a photo cover that said, it, it was in Romanian, but I'm going to translate it in English, with love, let us pass, mm -hmm. as in move through life. So in, it was written uh, somewhere on a mountain trail. Somebody else had written it. He just took a photo of it. And when I read that, I was like, wow, those are so beautiful messages, you know, from other people, other souls out there. With love, let us pass. Awesome. That's like one of the, although it's an emotion, it, love to me is much higher than just... Um, like, yeah, I think it goes awesome. beyond the emotions. It goes into the state. It's, yeah. a, it's a state. It's, it's everything. It's the highest plane, let's say, that you can reach or the highest level in terms of spirituality, in terms of intensity of experience. In terms of spirituality and in terms of being human yeah. on this planet. Yeah, I think there's also... Um, uh, David R. Hawkins, I hope I remember the name correctly, he had the levels of consciousness. Love, it was really high. And above love, it was just to be, like the ineffable yeah. stage. It's a really high um, state of consciousness. And yeah, it goes to the... That, that's our easiest path to spirituality, love. And I think Osho had this... I read it somewhere. He said that men need to enlighten or get enlightened in order to love and women need to love in order to get enlightened even yes, your yeah. dog i think it's agreeing with that <laughs> somebody's passing in front of our door and that's what my wolf does he's super defensive or um yeah he's defending protective the of the space yes. he's, yeah. do he's doing his job <laughs> yes yes i'm the mother of a wolf and he's I didn't train him to do that. He does that by himself. Yeah, I think it, it's one thing that we, uh, the two of us, having in common. <laughs> you have the Belgian wolf. I have the German wolf. Yeah, and we're both Romanian. That, that's international love for you. Yeah, all everybody's just one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, this was an awesome. Yeah, I think it's beautiful to finish with this message. Let us pass. Yes. With love, that's yes. With like. love, let us pass. Love, let us pass. Yeah, or Beautiful. let us pass with love, whatever other way you want to translate it. So, yeah, yeah. And if you guys enjoyed our conversation, do leave us some comments. Do leave us some questions. And also, we would like to announce you something, right, Amalia? Yes. <laughs> yes <laughs> okay <laughs> because this collaboration it's not only about recording a conversation and putting it on youtube what's actually been going on for some months already right mm -hmm. in the beginning of march when we started to work on, on this we are preparing a retreat for you yes it's a retreat that for now is dedicated only to women it was meant to happen in physical person with me coming from Portugal to Romania and going to a beautiful location and sitting together from Friday to, to Sunday and mm -hmm. diving into sexuality, sexual energy and sexual practices. Nevertheless, due to a shift in humanity's condition to interact with each other, we have decided to move our retreat online, mm -hmm. uh, still keep it in a form of retreat, uh, condense it over a weekend, not with the intensity of what it means to be physical present, nevertheless, with sessions and with spaces for us to, to dive in. He's still barking, yeah. I didn't hear, we didn't hear. He was. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that's okay. <laughs> well, you, take, you can take the word then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's super active now. So we would love to meet you online, my dear lady. <laughs> okay. And uh, guys, don't be discouraged. Like as soon as we figure something out that you would be welcome to, we would love to, to share the best of things that we can share with you. Because I think masculine empowerment is also important, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think the, the men that are listening to this, they, they know, or you guys, I mean, we are telling you right now, you can pick any of us to go and work either individual i created an online program for men and women so there are options where we do work with with men mm -hmm. uh, energy with men bodies nevertheless this program right now feminine essence it's called it's about women yeah we will put a link under this video um, you will enjoy it from the comfort of your own home and you will get all the details in the link how you need to prepare the schedule everything um and we'd love to see you there we'd love, love to have to you see with you us. there i would be so excited yeah for you to come and share this space with us yes and otherwise we would love to hear your questions about sexuality from body to spirit uh anything that you can you think that you would like to know more of anything else that you would like us to approach maybe we didn't approach it here enough so let us know and we can this was take one by take two we'll get a lot of questions from you guys yes and yeah we'd love to hear them we'd love to address them also exactly thank you so much liana this was wonderful you, <laughs> it's my pleasure and so i'm gonna have to go see Ivan also tell him thank you <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for your questions. They are all welcome and hopefully see you in take two. If not, yeah. in the retreat. Yes. Bye. Bye.